Since 1995, we've been detecting planets around Sun-like stars. At first, they were mostly Jupiter-sized that orbited close to the apparent star. This was due to the detection method and the sensitivity of the equipment used at that time. But then, something changed in 2009. NASA launched the Kepler Space Telescope, and at the end of its main mission, it had discovered 1,284 exoplanets, including a few that are almost Earth-sized. But this video is not about Kepler in general or its discovery. It's about the photometer with the 94.6 million elements detector that Kepler uses to detect planets. So, let's get into it. Kepler is a Schmidt-type reflecting telescope. This kind of telescope has a wide field of view and uses an easier to make spherical main mirror instead of the more difficult to make parabolic ones that's on most reflecting telescopes. At the focal point of the telescope is the CCD sensor with 94.6 million elements. This is not one big sensor though, but instead a collection of 21 sensing module. Each module consists of two CCD sensor chips and each chip has an element count of 2200 by 1024. This hierarchy makes it easier to align each module along the curved focal surface of the telescope. The thing to note here is that these CCDs are not used like regular CCDs to generate an image. Kepler, at its root, is a photometer attached to a telescope, not a camera attached to a telescope. A photometer is a device that measures the intensity of light emanating from a specific point. It does not generate an image. It generates a one-dimensional data stream. By using all of its light sensing elements at once, Kepler effectively uses a sensor as a 100,000 independent photometers. Kepler detects a planet by measuring a periodic reduction of light coming from a star. This is what would happen when a planet that orbits a star blocks some of the light that would otherwise reach Earth. This configuration only happens when the orbit of the planet is on the same plane as the Earth and the star. Many YouTubers have covered this transit photometry method in more detail, so I won't do that here. Instead, I'm going to look at why the CCDs are positioned the way they are and how the light that hits them is turned into useful data. The orbit of Kepler is heliocentric. That is, it orbits the sun instead of the Earth. This kind of orbit is much more stable for measuring the position of stars than an orbit around Earth. Now, because of this, the side of Kepler that faces the sun will also change as it orbits. This is not good because the radiator that removes the unwanted heat from the electronics and elsewhere needs to face away from the sun at all times. To fix this problem, the spacecraft is rotated by 90 degrees every three months. This ensures that the radiator will always face away from the sun, but that causes yet another problem. Since the telescope is fixed to the spacecraft, as the spacecraft rotates, so does the image that hits the CCD. However, the CCDs are arranged in such a way that light from a star will fall on different CCDs but at the same location for each 90 degree rotation. This makes processing the data easier because all you have to do is just change the CCD you're reading from and continue processing the data exactly like before the 90 degree rotation. This configuration works for all CCDs except for the one in the middle. In this case, you will have to do additional processing because after the 90 degree rotation, the star will still be on that CCD, but at a different location. Each of the sensor module contains two CCDs and they're separated by a gap. You'll notice that the gap of all the CCDs are not aligned to each other. Since any light that hits that gap cannot be recorded, engineers align each module in such a way to maximize the amount of light from really bright stars that hit that gap. See. This is because the light from these bright stars can affect a lot more sensor elements in the immediate surrounding, rendering those elements useless for observation. Now that we understand the placement configuration of these CCDs, let's look at how the sensor elements and the onboard electronics is used to convert photons into useful photometric data. First, a list of stars to study is sent to the spacecraft. This list is converted to specify the CCD module that should be used along with the row and column of the sensor element that should be the center of each star that is being observed. 
Obviously, the light from a star won't fit on a single sensor element. So, each star has an average of 32 neighboring elements dedicated to it. These 32 elements could be a square or rectangular in shape around the center element. As photons from stars hit these elements, an electric charge starts to build up. The longer the exposure, the higher the charge. Since Kepler has no shutter, it will be exposed to constant starlight, and eventually the sensor elements will become all saturated. To prevent this, especially for bright stars, every three seconds the charges are read from all sensors, but only the ones that represent stars of interest are saved for further processing. This cuts down on the data that needs to be transmitted to Earth. Remember, Kepler is not used as a camera, but instead a photometer, so we don't need the entire image. As we read data from the sensor element, it will be drained of its electrical charge, making it ready for the next round of photons. Each three second slice of data that's read is added to the previous slice in an accumulator to enhance the sensitivity and dynamic range of the sensors. This accumulation of data values is done in 15 minute intervals. After each interval, a baseline value computed from previous interval is subtracted from the current interval. So only the difference is saved. This is a big reduction in data size. Data saved from all sensors are finally compressed using Huffman encoding and transmitted to Earth at a rate of up to 2.88 megabits per second. After it's all said and done, each star takes up less than five bits of data per 15 minutes. Now, that is clever engineering at its best. The amazing Planet Finder photometer of the Kepler Space Telescope. I'm Dex DFX for Sensing the Universe. <laughs>